Hello and welcome back to Flat Out 2. We are very, very close to completing the Derby. Derby Cup, only a few more things to do, and we are there. We're just going to crack on the special Derby Forest Cup, which is a massive group of races, six races. It will be fun and excitement throughout, no doubt. Talking of fun and excitement, uh, the Beam NG uh, engine, the brilliant soft body physics engine from the guys who made uh, Rigs of Rods, has uh, got its game, it's called Drive, its alpha thing has been released, so you can uh, buy it now, get early access to the alpha and all that. Um, oh shit. Oh ho ho ho, there's pepper in the road. Oh, oh shit. <laughs> that was crazy. Yeah, you can download the free tech demo. Uh, it's just messing around with the uh, pickup truck in the arena that was in all the, the tech demos, funnily enough. is literally a tech demo. Um, but the actual alpha game has a variety of maps. Stuff so that's always going to be more added. There's talk of multiplayer through LAN. So Demolition Derby, which would be amazing. Uh, especially if it works properly with Hamachi. So, you know, you don't actually have to land. You just full land. Uh, we're in a second here. I have no idea where the... Oh, God. Miles ahead. But no, it's awesome. You should check it out. You, It's uh, £9.50 for the... For the game, or the alpha. Which leads on to the game, of course. Oh, shit, shit. But you can... Uh, like, pay more if you want. £5, or... You can put in your own amount or whatever. You can contribute if you really like what you see, of course, in the tech demo. You feel it's worth more than £9.50, which I think is like $15 or something. I think I think it's good value. I haven't bought it yet myself, but I will be doing very, very soon. I've had a mess around with the tech demo. Can't honestly say if I'll end up on the channel. It's a very, very intensive game. Maybe playing around with the graphic settings might help. I'm not too sure. My uh, my weak point on my computer is almost certainly my graphics card, and not my uh, not my CPU, not in the slightest. Is uh, the fact that I can render a video and only take out 36% of my CPU is certainly a testament to that. I strongly suggest. Um, if you're into rendering videos, get yourself an AMD FX 600 series. Uh, six, sorry, 6000 series. 600. Uh, series CPU. It's... I've never been a fan of AMD CPUs. I've always thought in Intel are better, and generally speaking, they are, in a vast majority of cases, better. But this has just impressed me, for that at least. Gaming, probably not as strong. But I've certainly never maxed it out with anything I've done. A six core processor. So that was a <laughs> good race. <laughs> that went well. So the next one is as good. Not very eventful for the scoring, at least, and we got pretty much no money from the actual race itself. But that's fine. That's not what we care about. We care about the trophies. We're in it for the thrill of the win, like a, a true racer, not not the money. We never sell ourselves to the highest bidding team. Move your undertune dart. Nothing on my fully tuned dart. There's a fence being thrown at me here. I don't know what to think about it. You could say I'm on the fence. Ha <laughs> ha! No, sorry. I <laughs> won't do that again. Holy shit! Ah, into the RV you go, Jason. Let me calling it an RV. I'm British. It's a camper van. Which, actually, I think sounds kind of gay. <laughs> Might be something to do with the word camp in it. <laughs> Nothing wrong with being gay, but... <laughs> it's, uh... I don't know, it's... It's all sticking... This whole thing about being as manly as one can be. And using the word camp on a regular basis, certainly. Prevents that. So yeah, RV it is. Recreational vehicle. 
which I suppose could be any vehicle you use for recreational purposes. So, say you have a SUV, sports utility vehicle, this is getting complicated, but if you were to use an SUV for your, your trips away, that would be a recreational vehicle. I suppose amateur motorsports is a form of recreation, so say you had a track day car, or an autocross car, or a rallycross car that you used, that would be an RV. Sports utility vehicle is interesting. I believe the term comes from uh, the idea that you'd use an SUV to maybe tow your your motorboat, your something to do with extreme sporting, a surfboard or something. But you could don't, don't quote me on that one. I'm not actually too sure. Oh shit! <laughs> Boulders. But I suppose that could be anything. But do we really need to muddy the waters with sort of classifications of vehicles any more than? Manufacturers have already done. Seriously, the amount of crossover of this and my all-wheel drive, seven-seating estate car tuned by tuning house, the uh, in-house tuning house. I suppose. Oh shit! Yo, oh, we got lucky with that. <laughs> if we hadn't clipped whatever the fuck that was, we would have hit that tree for one. Do you mind? Thank you. So, looking at a uh, third position, I think, for this one. As I was saying, manufacturers have already done a good enough job of messing around with uh, sort of groupings of vehicles. And, you know, this, a family sedan isn't a family sedan anymore. You don't buy a small family hatchback anymore to take your family somewhere. You take a sort of hatchback crossover like the, the Nissan Cash Guy, which is or Cash Cow. <laughs> How many they've sold? It's all confusing enough. So yes, I think we'll stick with an RV being an RV or a camper van, a, a mobile home, if you will, and a SUV can just be what the mothers in Chelsea take their kids to school with. And of course, I doubt that the mothers in Chelsea actually take their kids to school. I'd imagine they have a, a Filipino woman to do that for them. Holy shit, there's that stone again. We did not get off as well that time. <laughs> that was quite the trip. Right, we've got to block these guys if they come in too quick. Seems fine. She's pretty damaged. That's Katie Jackson there. Oh, we just got away with that. Ah, uh, oh, there we go. <laughs> Brilliant. And we got one power hit for 200 credits. Nothing else. We're, we're fine for money. We're not really having to buy anything for the time being. I'm still not sure what we're going to do about the next class. Whether to take the first car, get and drive it through again like we did here. Or to find the car that I want in the class. And, ah, oh, you again! Get off my car! Well, he's out of the running for a while at least. We'll just take this jump. Explosions! Landing on the wrong wheel. Wrong wheel? Landing on the wrong wheels. Two wheels as opposed to four. Two wheels bad. As they say on the popular automotive blocking site Jalopnik, or collective blocking site takes from blogs and news feeds and stuff. I'm sure you know what Jalopnik is if you're into motoring. Or if you've played Force, I'm sure you'll probably looked it up. And why is this DLC called the Jalopnik Car Pack? What's up with that? Which is why, although I'd safe to say that most Forza games are good, I couldn't possibly take Jalopnik or Kotaku's words on Kotaku being the gaming side of that group of websites. But how good it was. You do actually get dedicated writers for the sites as well as like the reposting of stuff. For that race. Throwing girders at Jason Jason Benton? Benton. Jack Benton, you can't wear Jay. 
Oh, okay. Oh, speed boost from the pepper there. Got understeer because the front wheels aren't on, actually on the ground. That thing is so roy. It's maxing out now. <laughs> it sounds like someone's blending. <laughs> uh, Sofia Martinez there making a smoothie behind me. I yeah, should make me one. Like a mango smoothie if possible. I, mean, I don't think she took the joke too well. She's... Oh, fuck. Yeah, we'll just do that. That's fine. Is that the same two people ahead of me again? That could become problematic for the championship. Don't want a, a championship fight like we did last time. I'd rather go back to getting gold. Oh, fuck. <laughs> Whoops. And boom. Nice. Really nice. So, yeah, how's that? I didn't get anything there. Anything there. But championship standings, we're still leading, but by one point. We have to step up our game. Pine Grove 2. Not sure I know this track. Play some sort of dirt racing track. Earlier on, um, I mentioned autocrossing with having a recreational vehicle. And that can mean one of two things autocrossing. Something I actually discovered. Which I'm pretty ashamed I didn't actually know this. If you're from America, autocrossing will be taking a car around a coned off course, usually not at particularly high speeds, and using more your driving skill more than anything else. A well set up car will help, but it's just it's technical driving. Which is something I like because it sounds really good. On tarmac, usually in car parks and stuff. Over here, that's called uh, auto test. It's interesting enough. So, what is auto crossing in Great Britain? It's actually kind of like rally cross, time trial rally cross, time attack rally cross. Yes, that's that's what we'll call it. We know what time attack racing is, and it's kind of that. Oh my God, everything's on fire! You, you get like uh, between two and four cars going out at once around the track, non-competitively. It's non-contact, non-racing sport. You only need a, a clubman license to do it. Around a, a usually like a, I don't know, a sort of dugout, dugout field or a grassy knoll or whatever. And you uh, set lap times, three laps, three or four times a day. You know, you'll get to do 16 laps or so in total. It seems to be the sort of average that they're saying. And you know that you need to do very little to your car. You get different classifications. You can take practically stock cars, slightly tuned. You can do what they call autocross specials, which is stuff that's definitely not road legal, but entirely sort of built for the purpose of, of autocrossing. And two very different things. And that's, it quite surprised me that I didn't know that. Once again, I suppose that's uh, about the most of the media you get in the world is uh, from America regarding most things, with the exception of the BBC, of course. Because if you want news journalism, obviously you're going to go for the British journalists, not the ones associated with News Incorporated, like the Daily Record. <laughs> that's my political stance on that, but it's best to take your word from a newspaper that's not part of a massive corporation other than the BBC, which generally speaking, fairly accurate. Unless, of course, you're one of these people that claim, complains about Top Gear. Uh, I can't believe that was set up. <laughs> which... <laughs> how could they lie to us like this? And like, there was a long time ago that Top Gear was... a sort of an entirely factual show. A very long time ago. Before sort of new Top Gear, Top Gear as it is now. 
of uh, James May and Richard Hammond and such like, when it had uh, Quinton Wilson and Tiff Nadal. It's been a long time since it was truly fashionable. So take these things, you know, they're just going out into the street and <laughs> messing up people's lives. <laughs> yeah. Which is harder to believe, <laughs> you know? But. Whatever. I can. I don't know what that sound was there. It probably won't be picked up for the microphone, but there's horses going past the, the window. There's a stables nearby to my home. Two more races. We have kicked arse. Absolutely. Crash becomes you, bugbear. That's an awesome poster. Why is that not the thumbnail for this video? <laughs> Why is that image not on the internet? <laughs> that was awesome. That would have been a great thumbnail. Not to say that the thumbnail's bad. That would be insulting Rog. It's Rog that deals with all the sort of photoshopping side of it because I'm fucking useless with Photoshop. I'm very much an MS Paint sort of person. The, the more artistic side of things is usually covered by Rog. I'm more of an ideas person than a practical person. I'm like, oh, you could do this. Rog says, yeah, great idea, and it gets done. I don't know, we'll call. Call me the designer, him, him the engineer. Apart from, of course, the designs he's came up with, which have been brilliant. No actual designs for thing. Well, I mean designs for like, the banner and stuff he's came up with, but his ideas, if you will, have been brilliant. Take Eddie vs. Razor, New Speed series. Just a stroke of genius on Roger's part there. We owe a lot of the channel's fame to, to that. And to the people who have watched it. I say the channel's fame for about uh like three hundred and sixty subscribers or something. Not to belittle all you guys, I mean, all 360 odd of you are, are great people. And honestly, thank you so much once again. I may be ass kissing, but whatever, some people like having their ass kissed. That's a forklift! It moves, okay. <laughs> we'll keep that in mind. We're not just dominating these races, which is nice. I'll take the low road this time. understeer. Use jack. It did jack. Okay, so we're a grouping of people. Someone on our inside. Oh, shit! Thanks a lot, asshat. Jeez, what do you have to do that for? Oh, and he's out! <laughs> no, he's held together by uh, Jason Walker there, I think it was he rammed into. Get some air, get some nitrous. Land it, land it. No. Whoa! A fish tail. Ah, it's, it's a good race. I like it when it's competitive. I don't like it just being a cakewalk. I don't like it being, you know, really, really difficult. It sounds kind of lame, but you know, I don't, I don't like to have to resort to dirty tactics. I like it when the difficulty is just right. And you're having a challenge, but it's not overwhelming. I guess that's probably the preference for most people, to be honest. Get some speed up. Nitrous across the line. Or oh, nitrous to the line, then cross it. Normally, and... no, oh, I just missed. Oh, that one didn't. <laughs> we got four slams for 400 credits. Still not on there for anything. That's fine. Pangrove won. Last last race. After I crash out, just press the nitro button to switch between. Huh, I didn't know that. I also don't like it being difficult because I'm driving like a total dick. You know, you'll have those days where you just can't drive for, for your life. You again! Get off my car! I think he crashed out, I'm not sure. Um I'm not even just in those days, you'll be you'll be playing a game and you just can't get the driving down. Or you haven't played it for ages and you still can't get the driving down. 
And when it's difficult like that, I have to say I, I don't really enjoy it. Not, not to mean I won't try. I mean, take, take Juiced One before I had to stop the series, for example. It was a, uh, it was difficult. I would try my best, but I was mostly hindered by the controls, and in fact, I, I just couldn't get a grip of the, the ridiculous physics we're in the game. Oh, this is going to end bad. That did end bad. Everyone's ended bad here. <laughs> Absolute carnage. Uh, I, there were points where I really didn't enjoy that. I have to, I have to be honest. There was, there was moments where, you know, I was, I was really considering, uh, why am I still doing this series? Uh, I, I suck. Well, why am I doing this? And you just get over it. You suck it up, and you keep trying. You trying. You slowly get better, and I did get better. I'm having lots more successes in the races, mainly down to having the advantage for the cars, but even against equal vehicles, we're still getting wins. I guess it's... Difficulty is such a large aspect of games these days. It's something that's continuously, continually discussed. And you've got... In the case of... Oh, this game is, is so easy, it's just pandering. Oh, this game is too hard, it's like... Nintendo hard, but why is Nintendo hard even a thing? I know that old Nintendo games are difficult. I played them. They were fucking hell compared to like 90 odd percent of the games today. It's just impossible. The <laughs> when they started doing the uh, the old school Nintendo games on the Wii U. People posting screenshots constantly. I'm stuck here. I'm stuck here. Admittedly, usually kids because they're not actually experienced Nintendo's heyday. And it's that down to the fact the games are easier now, and they're just used to having an easy time. I don't think so. I think Nintendo games were probably, you know, the difficulty you really want from a game. I think we're just sort of, uh, I don't know, I think we're pussying out. <laughs> but whatever. A little bit of a rant there. I'm third, that's not what I want to be. Oh shit, this again. Landed it that time. My right leg is completely dead, by the way, so if this pauses at any point, it's just because I'm screaming into the <laughs> into the sun. Oh, God, I am not going to be able to move for a good hour or so. <laughs> Boof. A bit more air. That was a nice, long, easy stretch there. Sofia Martinez, out of the way. You are, I believe, in second in the championship. You bitch. You little bitch. Clipping that tree again. Part of a tree, Rara. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> Shit. So, back into third. Nitrous along here. Nice. That's how we like to end our races. So, let's... Ah, oh, I should have waited for that crash. Never mind. Not like there's a shortage of crashes in them. Jesus, Katie, well done. Well fucking done. So, we won the tournament. By quite a considerable margin, actually. 2400 reward, Derby Ball 3 unlocked. And we've unlocked the Venom. Nice. Really nice. Now, if, of course, if I wanted to buy a Derby class car, that would be great, but I don't. Uh, okay, so the Derby final's unlocked. We've got 10 grand. Let's have a look at that, see. Where it is, what the hell? 
Ah, Grand Finals. Grand Final at Tesha Metal of Cars from all classes. Derby Finals, Race Finals, Street Finals, and the Grand Final, which is just everything, I think. We're not going to do that right now. We're going to look at the cars available in this class. See? I don't know. What I'm wanting to do is to buy CTR initially, although there's a couple of nice motors elsewhere. There's CTR, CRX rather, it's quite nice, but I would like to buy the Lancia, which isn't a Lancia at all, obviously. <laughs> it's a Datsun, and that's, that's ultimately what I want to get. So I'll probably, oh, the, again, there is the DeLorean lookalike, isn't there, the Fortune? Hmm. Daytona, clearly a Camaro. Is that a Challenger? I think it is. Probably Lentus, Ventura. And then you've got the Inseta, which really is, uh, that's a, a race class car when you look at it, but that's that's fine with me. Okay, so I'm gonna end the episode here. Thanks for watching guys. I'll see you later.